Academia just got a huge upgrade. Just imagine turning any research idea into an image that you can share and use to promote your work, make your work easier to understand, and even make editors more likely to publish your work. Well, with the new model, that is what is possible. In the past, it was so difficult. We had text, we had other things that it couldn't manage, but now it's just got an upgrade and the results are pretty amazing. So ChatGPT just got this. It's introducing 4.0 image generation. You can see that it's got amazing text. It understands prompts, you know, this sort of like long prompt that knew to put a reflection in. There's so much going on in this image. And importantly, the text bit and the people look real. Everything's great. Now, the one thing you've got to notice here is it's the best of eight. And that's going to sort of like play into our understanding a little bit later. So we've got useful um, image generation. It understands a lot more stuff. And this is how we can use it for academia and research. So the first thing I wanted to know was can it be used for graphical uh, abstracts. That's where I think it would be the most powerful and this is what happened. So now when you head over to ChatGPT and you've paid for it, you can go down here and you can see create image, visualize ideas and concepts. You can see that it's been updated. You click that and you get this create image sort of like tag there and then you can put your prompt. This is the prompt I put in create a graphical abstract for this peer reviewed paper abstract. And then I put in the abstract. I wasn't expecting much at this stage, but what happened blew me away because this is what happened. Now, is it perfect? No, absolutely not. But it is so much better than anything this image model has done before. And you can see it's got the AFM probe. It looks like an AFM probe. It's got the text, which is actual text, not that blurry stuff that happened before. It's got graphene, it understands that. It understands that there's an absorbate layer underneath it's got the substrate. Now, I can go away and sort of tinker with this in another sort of like tool like Canva, like Photoshop, stay around because I'll show you how I've done that with other images at the end of this video. But as a first start, that really just blew my mind because now for any abstract I create, I can create a graphical abstract super easily just by copying and pasting it in. Like I said, is it perfect? No, but it gets better. Check this out. I really wanted to push the limits of this like graphical abstract thing. So I put in a much more complicated paper. So here I did the same prompt. Then I said, here is the abstract. And that was the abstract. And this is what I got. Now, it's roll to roll production, roll to roll. So this bit's a little bit sort of extra, but I can get rid of that. Transparent electrode, it's got a zoom in bit. I don't know why it's got silicon or these made up elements here, but I can get rid of those. Transmission, it actually took the information that I put into it and is actually presenting it in the right area. So transmission is 86%, it's got bending stability, and then this is the sheet resistance stuff. And then it's got like this, plus minus power conversion efficiency of 90%. Is that an appropriate solar cell? Not really. But uh, I can't believe that it's put in all of the appropriate information. Now stay around to the end because like I said, I'm going to show you how I manipulate this image to make it perfect for submission. The second thing I think this would be super valuable for is cover artwork. When you submit a paper, you do want to sort of like put in a little bit of artwork, which maybe will end up on the front page of the paper that it gets accepted to. So I wanted to know, can it do something like that? So this is what I've got. I use the sort of same uh, little prompt here, create image, going from going down here, clicking on create create image. And then I put create cover artwork for this peer reviewed paper abstract in an A4 format. And then I put in the abstract and this is what it come up with. It's not ideal. I didn't really like this one because for a cover image, you really want it to be kind of more mystical, more uh, visually engaging, if you will. So I wanted something a little bit different. So I said here, make another version that has more artistic feeling that is visually more pleasing. That is a little bit more visually pleasing. But I think if I was to upload examples, which you can do, you just click down on this button here and you can upload examples. I think it would do so, so much better. And that's how I would use it. I'd love upload examples of images that I really like. And then I'd say, create something in this style that represents this abstract. And I think that's how it would work the best if you really wanted to create something that was really genuinely sort of like visually appealing. Once again, it's got the text here, which isn't ideal because we just want the graphical abstract, but you can see you could even use this on a poster presentation. You could use it on a PowerPoint presentation super easy by getting rid of this text. I absolutely love that. So this is making the representation of your work easier than ever. You've got no excuses really, have you? Now remember to stay around to the end because I'm going to show you how I take these outputs and actually make them useful using another tool.
Now check out this, this really blew me away. So I had an idea for a figure and all I did was go onto my tablet and create this. You can see it's got a sun up in the corner, it's got some squiggles and then it's got this sort of like zoomed out area of a solar cell. You can see I put in solar cell here. We've got the glass substrate, the P.PSS and the carbon nanotubes. And I was like, can it actually do anything with this? I've uploaded the image, let's see if we can turn it into a graphical abstract. So here I said, turn this into a graphical abstract. I have the sun in the top left hand corner beaming down on a solar cell with a zoomed in section showing the composition and this is what it created. It was pretty bloody awesome. Now it hasn't got it 100% right but the fact that that image, let me show you again, look how rubbish that drawing was. I mean there's lines, there's crossovers, you know what's going on down here. I sort of tried my best at a solar cell and it really understood what I wanted and it's put the appropriate text in the appropriate areas. I didn't actually say that this was p.pss, it read it from my handwriting which was all scratchy and horrible. So here we've got glass, p.pss, carbon nanotubes. Now ideally these carbon nanotubes would be in here and this is one of the first issues I kind of noticed with this is that if you want to manipulate an image it's quite difficult so for example I said down here put the carbon nanotube lines in the magnified bit in the carbon nanotube layer in the magnified zoom and it didn't really do that it just kind of like made them less squiggly so this is one issue I think if you want to sort of like try to edit an image you really have to start from scratch take that prompt put it back in and just see the iterations it gives you and then choose the best one I think. I think you probably have to go through probably about eight to ten iterations to get something you really like. That's what was shown to us by the first you know introduction to it here. We can see that it's a uh, best of about eight and that's what I would expect but we can take this and make it even better. For example we can take this and put it into Canva. So this is where um, it really sort of like comes down to you manipulating the image but you've got a great starting point because here we've got the image and then I can use the tools in Canva. So if I click here and click edit, there's a load of AI tools that I use all the time for creating thumbnails, for creating images, all sorts of things. And you can see here, what have I got? I've got magic eraser. So I use that magic eraser on this bit. I can sort of like highlight it all and say, get rid of this, get rid of this. I don't want any of that. And then I can just click go and it will get rid of that. So anyway, you won't see me do it because I've done it already. And this is what happened down here. Um, you can see that we've got, you know, let me zoom in. Ooh. So you can see that I used the magic eraser to get rid of the carbon nanotubes on the top and then I just drew on these little carbon nanotubes. With those two little changes I've now got something that's a graphical abstract that I can use and it all came from, let me remind you, this really rubbish drawing that I put here. So if you're better at drawing and you can sort of like present it well in your mind and you can just sketch it out, you've now got no reason not to put in a really awesome graphical abstract that you can submit to any journal that you're putting your paper in. Great, love that. If you thought that was impressive, wait until you see what it can do next. Another way you could use this is by creating images to put on your poster presentation. Now, it's always nice to put a nice image on your poster presentation that will draw people to your poster and ask you questions so you're not just stood there awkwardly with your beer or your soda water going, oh god, oh god, oh god, this is so awkward. So, this is how I would do it. Once again, I'm using the create image prompt and here I've got create an interesting graphic that would attract people to view my poster at a conference poster session. Here is the abstract and I put in the abstract here and you can see I got this. Now, I was very impressed with this. You know, obviously I don't want this text up here. And then I've got, you know, the actual figures, which is great. 6.6. .6. It used a little comma. I don't know why, but 6.6 .6 ohms per square, 86% transmittance in this bit here in this sort of like wavelength range. And then this I really like. I love the fact it did that. We've got a really good understanding that that is the silver nanowire kind of like electrode. And then we've got this, which is good enough, but not really great. This is what it is. It's a complex of those materials but that's not what it looks like but I do like this bit on top so maybe I could use that on part of my poster and the way I would do that is I would download that and take it over to Canva again and one of the things I really like in Canva if we click here is magic grab and all you have to do if there's a bit in the image that's generated that you really like you just change the brush size and you say okay yeah give me this element here I really like this and then you click go and it will give you the element. We won't wait for it to do it because I've done it already where this is the element down here. Look, I can now copy and paste this across to any sort of like poster that I've got, anything that I need sort of like a little graphical representation of what it looks like. This is really great and it's all from just that simple 
input of an abstract. Absolutely love that. And then I could grab these things. I could grab this sort of like top bit as well. You can grab any element you want from the output and put it into uh, anything you want, really. Poster presentations, graphical abstracts. You could even create like a um, cover artwork to submit to uh, journals. And also you could even just use it in PowerPoint presentations. Absolutely love it. It's easier than ever, but it's not foolproof. Here's the issues that I kind of ran into. I wanted to know if it could take an entire PDF of one of my papers and create like a graphical abstract or a cover image. So I put in one of my PDF papers here and then I said, provide cover image artwork for the front of a peer review journal in A4 size based on the up uploaded paper and that is not what my uploaded paper had anything to do about it just sort of provided me with the cover artwork of an international journal so it had an issue extracting information from a pdf but if you copy and paste the text in then it works perfectly but it doesn't sort of like extract stuff from a pdf that's good to know i think but maybe that will change in the future i hope so um and then i actually said no that's not right i want artwork with no text that represents this paper and then i put in all of the text from that paper and uh, I was like, oh yeah, this will definitely work. I'm pretty sure this will. And then, meanwhile, bah, bah, I don't know who that is. They look lovely, but they've got nothing to do with nanocomposite roll to roll silver nanowire carbon nanotube electrodes. But I can't use that. I don't know why I did it. There's a little bit of an issue. <laughs> And the last thing I did for fun is I went in, I put up one of my headshots and I said, change the supplied image to a professional headshot suitable for submission to a conference. For example, they're like, provide a headshot so your face can go on the, uh, the, uh, what do they call it? The program, that's what it is. All right, and then we've got this. Does that look like me? Let me know in the comments because it's kind of a bit like me. It could be my brother or cousin, I think, but uh, I don't know if that is good enough. So yeah, it can sort of like take a directly your face and put it into like a suit. But nonetheless, I think it did like a pretty good job. I think you could use it and then people, you know, see you from a distance anyway. And I think, you know, glasses, beard, bald head. Yeah, that's Andy, done. Not great though, I wouldn't use this. If you like this video, head over to this one where I talk about using ChatGPT's deep research to save hours on your research.